Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! <clears throat> Mr. Clary, I really enjoyed your podcast with T.J. Martinell. Really enjoyed it, especially the discussion of great movies. Although T.J. Martinell is completely wrong about everything James Bond. Um, we just have, but he's a young kid. We'll educate him later. What would it cost for you to do a video on the top ten movies that every man should watch and your rationale for each? I think it would be very useful for men out there. Plus, I'd be interested in what you think and see if there are any movies I haven't seen on your list. Thanks, Sauron of McKay. And uh, he didn't want me to mention his real name, so I should not. I won't. And then <clears throat> I had to put together the list. So here's the list. And uh, this isn't in order, but obviously Die Hard is by far, by leaps and bounds, not only the best movie ever, but is an absolute must for every man to watch. It's just the greatest movie ever. I have some friends in Chicago who have yet to see it, and they still claim to be men, which they cannot claim to be because you can't be a real man. And have never seen Die Hard, but we're going to go off with that list, and I got the other nine. I've grouped several others within different categories because they have the same moral or motif. Uh, but we're going to start with Die Hard. Die Hard, obviously, the greatest movie ever made. I'm not. This is not opinion. This. This is just, I saw it when I was in the eighth grade. Mr. and Mrs. Cedar took me in, you know, and because my parents wouldn't let us go see a rated R movie. We got to see a rated R movie, and it was the best movie ever. It changed my life. It, you know, it's kind of stupid and funny. So, oh, did a movie do a book read? Yeah, actually, it did. And all I wanted to do was be John McClane. All I wanted to do was be John McClane and be that hero, that real man. Now, Unfortunately, Die Hard is pretty much obsolete nowadays. Um, if you look into Die Hard canon, uh, him and his wife break up, so he probably should have just walked out and grabbed his kids and not saved Nakatomi Plaza. But if you want something that speaks directly to the core of being a man, a real man, what it takes, the sacrifice, in the olden days, in the old, when you used to care, when there was something worth fighting for, Die Hard is the movie for that. Um, unspeakable odds against you, heroism, selflessness, pain, misery, suffering, intelligence, it's just, you have to watch, you have to, you have to, you should be ashamed if you haven't seen it. Uh, and I, unfortunately it is obsolete, it's an obsolete movie, but if you want something that will speak directly to your genetics, to your Darwinism, to, to what it is to be a man, you have to see Die Hard. And now it's, you know, I don't know any guy that'd be like, what? Risk my life to do it? No, see ya. Bye. I just, I'm out of here. We're done. So it is sadly a um, dated piece. Um, because it, it, it's sad. sad. The world... The, the, I'm sorry. You American women don't deserve a John McClane. You really don't. You really don't. So uh, we got that. Next one. Turn this down. Now everyone's going to email me because they sense I'm working. Uh, this is not the second best, but this is a must. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. I love the movie because it's one of the funniest, most clever, charming movies. It is a remake uh, with Marlon. Uh, the, the original was with Marlon Brando and David Niven, uh, which was charming unto itself. But Dirty Rotten Scoundrels uh, with Michael Caine and Steve Martin is brilliant. Um, there is no real moral lesson in that movie. It's just one of the funniest, most charming movies ever. And if you have cancer, you're dying, you're, you're terminally ill, I strongly recommend watching that because it's one of the greatest bits of humor uh, humankind has ever come up with. I like it because the woman wins in the end. Um, the Steve Martin version. Uh, it's very clever. And it shows, yeah, you, yeah, just because they don't, don't cut out the women, don't cut out the women, because they come get you back in the end. And that's why I really like about Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Um, just a funny show, and these two guys get it in the end. Not, not badly, but uh, it, it's very cute. 
All right, now I took three movies that everybody should see, so this is more of a list of 12 movies, but these three movies all have the same thing in common. And that is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Midnight Run, and another spaghetti western that's a little bit more obscure called Duck You Su uh, Sucker that stars James Coburn and, um, oh, what was his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Um, it doesn't matter which movie you should see. All of them you should see. Uh, but the, the theme is the same, and that is environments and your uh, environment around you may pit you against another man, but that man is very likely to have gone through equivalent hardships, galvanizing processes, and um, events to become somebody that you really respect, and, and worse in this ironic sense of the case, be your best friend. And that's what these movies are, is they're movies where society and the environment has pitted two men against one another, and as they get to know each other, as they either fight or duke it out, or they have to go on some mission together, they find out that this is their best friend. This is somebody who's very rare. Uh, you could throw Heat in with this one, too, but I'm not that big of a fan of Heat. Heat is all right, but The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Midnight Run, Duck You Sucker, uh, two are spaghetti westerns. The other is just a good solid up 80s flick with Robert De Niro. Um, it is where you get to see camaraderie. Where, you know, the moral integrity of hanging out with a fellow man who's equivalent to you. Uh, and rarely do you find someone of that caliber. Um, and you're lucky to find people like that. You're lucky to have friends. One of the worst things in Midnight Run is he turns around and the guy's gone. He's gone forever. You never see him again. And uh, I haven't ruined anything. But those are, that's the backstory. Yeah, there's, there's, oh, we got to go get, you know, Tuco. We got to get the gold. Uh, the real story being told in those movies is the one of camaraderie and friendship, even though it may be from someone who you think is your enemy. So there's that. Man on Fire, starring Denzel Washington. Great movie, a little slow at first. Um, that's the only complaint I have about it. But Man on Fire is an absolute must. It shows you that you have, it's a warning. It's a warning to men out there that you will fall in love. Not romantic love. You're going to care about people who come into your life. And uh, sometimes uh, that's, a, that's a liability. Now, obviously, um, the movie in Hollywood being what it is, there's shootouts and, and gangsters and all this other stuff. But it's basically the story of this, uh, I wouldn't say washed up, but... Um, He's all upper 30s. You know, how old was Denzel in that time? Maybe lower 40s. Ex-military, special ops. And he's got nothing in life. He's got nothing in life. He's thinking about killing himself. He's got a, a, a pistol with a bullet. and um, He drinks and uh, he gets this contract to watch over to be a bodyguard of this little girl down in Mexico. And then um, he ends up not falling in romantic love, but he actually loves this kid. Like He enjoys her company and he has reason to live again and then the mafia kidnaps her and they kidnap the wrong girl uh because then he unleashes and he's the man on fire and it's great you want to talk about a revenge movie i mean this is this is fuck mama bear this is daddy bear and he's going after his buddy he's not even related to the kid he just you know, it was the first thing of kindness and sweetness that he found in his life. And um, and they take it away from him, and he goes apeshit. And not apeshit is the wrong word. He methodically uses, he uses all of his resources to methodically hunt these people down and exact his revenge. It's just, it's awesome. Just awesome. All right, 12 O'Clock High, starring Gregory Peck. Um, I like it because it's... I was thinking about putting a, a bridge too far uh, on this, but uh, in, in part because it teaches you the lesson of, yeah, the good guys don't always win. But I like 12 O'Clock High simply because it shows you or it cinemizes uh, what it takes to give your, your entire effort. Um, my personal... Uh, affection for this movie comes from working in college and I gave the maximum effort. There was nothing left to be done. Um, and sometimes, in, in this case it's World War II, 
the uh, U.S. 8th uh, Air Group, uh, 8th Bomber Air Group, um, and they're just getting their asses kicked. And it's like, no, we, we are in a war of economics against Germany. We have got to get closer, bomb them more, bomb them more accurately. And Gregory Peck comes in. Some people would say it's a movie about leadership. I, I would say it's that, too. Uh, but what I like most about it is what they test the limits of human endurance in this movie. I mean, it's a movie. Um, and that's why I love it. It's like, we need to discover what maximum effort is. And, and it's true, because that's what I, I experienced it. And then also, as an economist, you look at war, and it, all it is is, is economics. So we got to destroy more of their man hours that went into building that tank and to train that pilot to wipe them out. We, I mean, so it's, it's um, you know, you throw down in war and 12 o'clock high shows you the, the realities down to the individual human. The pilots, the bombardiers, the navigators, the gunners, everybody's like, we got to we got to do you could say i kind of wanted to throw in band of brothers in there uh where captain sobel was uh played by david schwimmer um pushing easy company uh, if you haven't seen it's a great great uh, hbo series i wanted to throw that in but it's not technically a movie but that was like maximum effort oh yeah oh did did a charlie company train we're going to train twice as hard because uh, he's a dick but then that's why easy company became the best company in that, I don't know, brigade, platoon, whatever they call it. Uh, American Beauty. American Beauty is a must. Uh, it teaches you, it's a good movie on its own, but it also teaches you to be a man. Uh, this came out in 1999, 2000. Um, the anti-male, rah-rah female, the 24-7 rah-rah female, independent, strong, independent, don't need no man, fish, bicycle, trademark, had not been kicked into full effect by that time, but it was certainly there. Um, and this is a, a movie where the guy, Lester Burnham, he starts telling everybody to fuck off and he's had, he starts standing up for himself. He stands up to his boss, stands up to his wife, he starts hitting the gym, he buys a, uh, you could say he goes through a midlife crisis, but what it really is, is it's the story of a man who got sick and tired of being pushed around and says, no, fuck it, I'm doing this. And the backlash that he received, but then also the respect he gets in the end, so it's uh, it's a uh, a story where he's, you know he's 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 catching flack, but he overcomes that, and then in the end, everyone's like, "Wow, we really respect you." But I won't tell you what the end is uh, because it's a sad, tragic ending. But it's good. McClintock, McClintock is a must. Happy, go feel lucky. Just watch it; you'll enjoy it. Um, it's almost a musical. I don't like musicals. But this is as close to a musical as you can get without the music. Stars John Mc, uh, John McLean. John Wayne uh, has Maureen O'Hara, and it's basically a taming of the shrew. And along the lines of American Beauty, but less dark, it's how John Wayne stands up to his wife, says, nope, we're not doing this anymore, and in the end he spanks her. It's great. He just starts spanking her. And... Uh, that alone, in today's standard, it it would be um, it'd be worth watching. It'd be worth watching, just because like you would put a woman over your knee and you'd spank her, and oh my god, and then surprise, surprise, she likes him at the end of it. Imagine that. So uh, we got that. High noon. Gary Cooper. Um, I like it because it's a good movie as always, but it also tells you that um, you're on your own. Uh, ain't nobody coming to save you. And that is a very important lesson to learn. The whole, the, the townspeople are not backing them up. There's no, there's no cover. It's just him going up against the bad guys. Um, again, it probably is outdated like Die Hard. Because why would you do that now? I mean, you maybe if you have a good family or something, okay, maybe you'd go and help out and protect your family. But for a citizen or a people, if you're a sworn ship, no, no, absolutely not. Uh, but it does show you what it means to be a real man, uh, at least back in the olden days. And then it also teaches you the lesson that nobody is coming to save you. No one. You are on your own. You are going to have to save yourself. No matter what the Democrats promise you and tell you, you are on your own. And so that is a very important lesson to learn there with a good movie. Uh, number nine, Tropic Thunder. The older I get, the more and more I like this movie. It's hilarious. 
I would say it's on par with Dirty Rotten Scoundrels in terms of hilarity, but it is a different type of comedy. And it's a straight-up guy flick. There is no moral, ethical lessons or life lessons to draw from Tropic Thunder. Um, it's just a fun, stupid movie. What I have found with Tropic Thunder is it is a movie that you can tell whether or not the guy that is watching it is a real man, and then also whether you should date a girl or not. Girls will not like this movie. It's stupid guy humor. Just stupid Jamoke jokes all the time. It's just dumb, stupid guy humor. But girls, you can say, oh, they'll roll their eyes, they'll pat you on your head, and they'll say, yeah, it's kind of cute and clever. Tom Cruise dancing in the fucking end is worth it alone. Um, it is definitely one of the top ten movies I'd recommend. But you can use it. It's not so much that it's entertaining. It is entertaining. It's a great movie. But you can use it to figure out more about other people. People either love this movie or they hate it. If they hate it, uh, something wrong there. Something's not right. That's not the girl I recommend you marry, all right? But um, if they're like, yeah, that's kind of stupid. Yeah, it was stupid, but it was funny. And, and uh, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> it's just so stupid. It's great. Ben Stiller hit that one out of the park. But you got to watch it. Tropic Thunder is an absolute must. And then finally, finally. No, no, no. There we go. Um, Lost in Translation with Bill Murray. This is a more serious one. And I bought the, uh, the DVD once I, once I saw the movie in the theater. And um, this is about the only one on the list that isn't... Uh, you know, shoot him up, normal guy, top ten. People say, well, why Lost in Translation? I just like the damn movie. And the reason why is that it's Bill Murray is in Japan, and he can't talk to anybody because he doesn't speak Japanese. And then um, he meets, uh, what is it? Oh, what's her name? Scarlett Johansson, a very young Scarlett Johansson. She's, she's not pretty in this movie. Um, but she speaks English. She's an American. Then they hang out and they form a relationship. And you can see how alone this guy is. He's very popular. He's very, he plays a, a famous uh, American actor and celebrity. And if you don't know about Japanese um, marketing, what they do is they will they'll pay American actors gobs of money to advertise beer. I think Harrison Ford advertised Korean beer or something like that. And he was paid $10 million just to pose with a beer. So it's playing off of that. But he's there. He's making all this money. He's got everything in the world. And uh, his wife is cold and removed. He's talking to her over the phone. They're talking about drapes or something like that. And um, he just goes out into the Japanese nightlife and hangs out with a bunch of Japanese people. They know who he is because he's famous, but he can't talk to them. And the only person he can talk to is uh, the character played by uh, Scarlett Johansson. And it is a visually, it's a visual movie. There's not a lot of words uh, exchange because he can't speak. So you almost feel as suffocated as he does in the movie not being able to speak English or associate with anyone. And so it's a visually stunning downtown Tokyo with the lights and everything like that. It's a visually stunning movie, but that's what I liked about it is it's like we're going to make a movie that doesn't have a lot of dialogue. It's going to be visual because the guy can't speak the language. And so I thought that was a, that was a very, I don't want to say maybe charming movie, um, but it's, it, it's a good movie. It's definitely one of the top ten I'd recommend. Uh, there were certainly others. Um, you know, I got my movies back there. Cowboy Bebop the movie, uh, Serenity. Um, what else do I own? I own many other movies. Casablanca I would put up in there. Um, Casablanca is probably also must make it 11. Uh, but everyone says to watch that. And um, that, Again, there's no real moral lessons in Casablanca. It's just witty as hell. The, the pinnacle of wit. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So Die Hard, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, All Together, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, Midnight Run, Duck, You Sucker, Man on Fire, 12 O'Clock High, American Beauty, McClintock, High Noon, Tropic Thunder, and Lost in Translation with Casablanca being an obligatory 11th uh, movie to watch. So. All right, that's it. You guys got questions, can't be got answers. Ask at We'll see you guys later. Toodles.